Welcome to another wonderful video on discrete mathematics. Uh, today we will be presenting Big O Notation. We are Group B2. We consist of Joshua Nani, Jiatu Lu, David Brownman, and Chasen Hurst. To find out more about Big O and other topics, visit noadam.com. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Big O Notation and Big O notation estimates the growth of a function or a function in an algorithm given the inputs n to the algorithm. And it does this without worrying about constant multipliers or smaller order terms. Uh, big O notation will assume that all the different operations used in the algorithm take the same amount of time. So if you were to say that the function f of x is big O of g of x, where c is a constant, f of x would be big O of g of x only if f of x is less than or equal to g of x multiplied by any constant c. And this would be true for any x value bigger than a k value. So the k value would be when the c times g of x outgrows and continues to outgrow as x goes to infinity, the function f of x. Uh, the constant c and k are called witnesses to the big O notation. So to prove that f of x is big O of g of x, you need to only find one pair of witnesses, c and k, to prove that f of x is less than or equal to g of x multiplied by the constant c whenever x is bigger than the witness k. So we'll do an example of this. We need to show that the function f of x, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1, is big O of x squared. So to start off, we can assume that k is going to equal 1 because when x is bigger than 1, x is less than x squared, and also 1 will be less than x squared. So we could rewrite the original function using these assumptions as x squared plus 2x plus 1 is less than x squared plus 2x squared plus x squared. This would equal 4x squared, which would be our big O notation where c equals 4 and, as we defined above, k equals 1. So the big O notation for f of x would be uh, x squared since uh, it is less than or equal to 4x squared where again c is equal to 4. As you can see 4x squared will outgrow x squared plus 2x plus 1 and it will continue on to be larger than it as x approaches infinity thus if f of x is x squared plus 2x plus 1. We prove that the witnesses c equals 4 and k equals 1 proves that f of x is big O of g of x when g of x is x squared. So here's a little, another little theorem about big O notation. Say if we have a function fx which is equal to a n x n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus da 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 plus a 1 x plus a 0, where a 0, a 1, t until a n minus 1 and a n are real numbers, then fx is the big O of x to the power of n. We can already see this from the previous example, where x squared plus 2x plus 1 is the big O of x squared. So let's move on to the big omega no notation, which is closely related to the big O notation. What is the definition for big omega? It is, if fx is big omega of gx, if there are positive constants such c and k, such that fx, the absolute value of fx, is greater than or equal to c times the absolute value of gx, we notice here there is something different because c and k here must be positive constants. 
This is different from the big O notation because there are no restrictions about the value of C and K in the big O notation. And we notice that if fx is big O gx, then gx must be big O fx because if fx, the absolute value, is greater than or equal to C times the absolute value of gx, we must have gx is less than or equal to 1 over C times the absolute value of fx. Here, the witness is 1 over C instead of C. So for next one, a uh, little note, any function, no matter what f fx is, it is always the big omega of 0, because no matter what fx is, we always have the absolute value of fx is greater than or equal to 0, which makes a lot of sense. Hi guys, all right. We will conclude this video by talking about big theta notation. Now big theta notation is very similar to big O notation and big omega notation. Uh, let's start with the definition. So big theta notation is when you find uh, a function such that the absolute value of your original function f at x is greater than or equal to some constant c multiplied times the absolute value of a function g at x that you have found to be the big theta function where x is greater than k. Now you can see that this uh, definition looks very similar to the big O notation, the big theta notation, and, or excuse me, big omega notation. They, the three are, um, they are related, and here is how they are related. So earlier, Josh showed, or gave you the example, f at x, f at x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. And he defined that big O of 4x squared was the big O for the original function f at x. Zhao 2 also demonstrated that big theta, or excuse me, big omega of f at x could be seen as x squared. Notice these two functions are very similar. They differ by a constant c. Um, the idea behind big theta notation is to find a function whose core function is the same um, for the big O and the big uh, omega. And what I mean by that is this. For the big O, it was 4x squared. The core equation is the x squared part. Big theta, or excuse me, big omega was x squared. Again, core equation of x squared. Because these two uh, functions are virtually identical except for the constant that they're multiplied by, we can say that x squared will end up being, or that the big theta of the original f at x is going to be x squared. Also, one other very interesting thing to note about big theta notation is that if you find a function f at x whose big, whose big theta is some, fun, or is some arbitrary function g at x, if we also find another function, h at x, 
whose big theta is also g at x, then it can be said that f at x and g at x, or excuse me, and h at x are of the same order. This is a very important property and very valuable for many uh, applications of mathematics. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.